So thank you very much for this opportunity. I will start and Marianne will continue. Um, thanks very much for the opportunity of presenting here. Um, so digital humanities, uh, let's say broadly conceived, Um, social justice in digital humanities, both terms broadly conceived, um, really is being uh, incorporated more and more, in fact, as the project we just listened to uh, has demonstrated. There's also lots of issues. They also came up in the last presentation, so you all were a fabulous uh, entry to our talk. Issues of privacy, ethics, copyright really are taking on greater prominence. So our paper today, very short, will focus on a new, what we're calling community or different course for Daria Teach, and it's called Social Justice in the Digital Humanities. So first we'll talk about um, the project um, and the platform we use. So basically Daria Teach um, is, um, uh, um, A uh, project that's been going on till 2000, since 2013, and the inspiration for this particular course came out of research uh, initiatives underway at many institutions, including teaching, diversifying the curriculum, as well as a very large body of scholarship uh, in the digital humanities that's being conceived within a social justice framework both theoretically, as well as in the values embedded in its execution. So this course is a slight departure for Daria Teach. We began focusing on skills like XML, TEI, multimodality. And in the second phase of our funding, we focused on critical making and design thinking. Daria Teach is an open form for course content in the digital arts and humanities. We have 15 courses in English with six courses in translation. And within about the next six months, I think we'll have about six new courses which have been developed by projects not associated with our original Daria Teach team. Uh, this grant has been developed from, um, sorry, this project through a grant from Daria. It's the European Digital Arts and Humanities infrastructure and two of its working groups, one on Daria Teach and the other on ethics and legality in the digital arts and humanities came together to develop this course. You also have, if anybody's interested, a YouTube channel where we host our video content. Um, we have about 130, 140 videos, 19 channels. Um, which mostly correspond to our courses, all free stuff. So the goal of this course is twofold, to create a community-driven course focusing on existing work in the area and to encourage future scholarship by highlighting projects and processes from around the globe through a series of case studies augmented by theory, relevant concepts such as social justice, post-colonial, decolonial theory, diversifying the curriculum, that of feminism, et cetera, et cetera. The course is also concerned with issues of ethics, privacy, and copyright, as well as, as again, we've heard in the last presentation, the additional duty of care when developing and disseminating content created by or about marginalized indigenous or minority populations, and or those whose ethics and traditions differ from dominant Western values. So we began with a survey um, in the summer of 2022, and I'll uh, put this in the chat uh, a little later. Um, and we invited colleagues to tell us about their research, both projects and theoretically informed articles. We received 22 responses. The survey is still open and we encourage anybody um, whose work fits into this area to submit your research as we're still very actively recruiting case studies. 
The result of our survey, along with desk research, um, including looking at past global DH conference presentations, provided us with a solid base for social justice projects in many parts of the globe, although many gaps remain, and we'll come back to some of them later in this talk. So we face two semantic or maybe scoping issues. The first is in regards to what research is considered um, in the digital humanities. Is it tools or methods that digital humanists use? Is it via self-identification? I say I'm a digital humanist. What exactly we ask for those porous outer boundaries between humanities and heritage, archive and museum studies, or the humanities and other fields? And do we recognize the research to be included in terms of content or context? And we'll give you a few examples. So one project we decided to include from South Africa, we, dis we discovered at last year's Global DH Conference. Although neither of the PIs self-identify as digital humanists, David Wallace at the University of Michigan in the States is a social justice archive, and Sadiq Motala from University of Cape Town in South Africa is a civil engineer. Yet their research with integrate, which integrates archives, geomatics into an augmented reality, enhanced walking tour of District 6 in Cape Town is squarely in the space, both methodology, methodologically and conceptually that we want to highlight in this course. On the other hand, we questioned including the transgender media portal on methodological grounds as a site that aggregates versus a project such as the Queer Lit Database that actively reconceptualize knowledge systems implementing critical research. Our second scoping or semantic issue arises in the conceptual space of identifying social justice, diversity, or decolonizing projects, with the additional caveat that is that it's within the amorphous space of digital humanities. Here we're taking a more embraceive approach, using the opportunity to explore and problematize the issues, understandings, theories, and positioning surrounding these terms without trying to get to refine them or get caught up in def definitional debates. As a basis for our explorations across existing projects of intersectionality, social universalized knowledge systems guide us, as does the acknowledgement of the decolonial entanglements and call for border thinking. So based on, on the idea that the theoretical and epistemic, epistemic must have lived, have a lived dimension to them, and that theories already exist, which sit at the very borders, if not outside of the colonial matrix of power. Lived here is in the sense of the experiences of those who have been excluded by the production of knowledge, by modernity. And I will turn it over to my colleague, Marianne. Thank you, Susan. Um, so our reaching out to the community to make this course co-created is a key objective for our own understanding, but also to make visible research that may be invisible beyond the community it was created for, <clears throat> and to allow voices to be heard that have been silenced, such as in the American Prison Writing Archive. Next slide, please. Uh, or the Canadian. Uh, Yik uh, Police Violence Archive, which is exposing police violence through public records in the city of Edmonton. These projects we view as public humanities, opening up not just cultural, but state archives that have traditionally remained hidden or closed. In the small number of projects we have been discussing up to now and many other projects to be included in the course, we, we view digital humanities scholarship as a public site for resistance. Next slide. 
We are very conscious of our own role being seen as gatekeepers. And as we have discussed, we find ourselves making value judgments and exceptions to our own criteria. We are also conscious of boundaries, disciplinary, local, global, and methodological. Do we include projects arisen from post-colonial studies with some of its roots in what was the British Empire? The projects in a country like Ireland, which is arguably England's, England's first colony, using digital humanities to write back to the empire, making visible what was lost or destroyed or hidden in the fight for independence, or re-evaluating the archival record through new technologies, as some of the projects on this slide shows. <clears throat> Next slide, please. Through the projects shared with us, we realize how layers and entanglements of coloniality uh, open up uh, all over. This also goes for Scandinavia, often considered a homogenous area of modern welfare and democracy. <clears throat> From the 1990s uh, onward, however, scholars and artists across Scandinavia have done critical studies into the layers of coloniality, which has formed in Nordic areas since early modern time. That goes for intra-Scandinavian coloniality across the Scandinavian borders. It goes for indigenous people, the indigenous people of the Northern Europe and the Arctic, Arctic the Sami of Sapmi um, and the Inuit of Kalalit Nunat. Both people traverse, um, traverse uh, national borders. And of course, the colonization of the global South uh, through trade companies such as the Danish, Danish West India Guinea co uh, Company handling the Black uh, Atlantic trade of enslaved people from West Africa to the Danish uh, Virgin Islands. <clears throat> the voices, oh, sorry, <laughs> uh, go back a bit, Susan. Uh, the voices uh, of the shadows uh, of the monument is an example of a public engagement project built on digitized archives and DH approaches, which in an audio walk of 15 minutes presents a web of colonial stories, most of which are unknown also to local inhabitants of Copenhagen. Representations of Inuit, representation of the sugar trade is found all over in the city Copenhagen. And the next slide. The last case example we want to draw your attention to is a digital storytelling and civil participation project towards the historical narrative of Shanghai in the Shanghai Memory Project hosted with the Shanghai Library. Wukan Road, the pilot case of the Memory Project, was a hope of many celebrities and historic buildings in Shanghai's renowned French concession um, um, from the colonial area all having their own stories, the buildings and the celebrities of politics, art and literature, but also of social injustice under the treatise powers. The Wukan Road project deploys digital storytelling to capture the voices of common people, those usually unheard, in order to democratize the story of Shanghai through a critical multi-voiced rereading and rewriting of the past of this uh, of this uh, uh, area of Shanghai. The use of digital storytelling as an enhancement of uh, DH to encourage civil participation in the reconstruction of local histories is another example of public humanities as a space for resistance, reconstruction, and reparation. And to um, uh, close our uh, presentation, we want just to show you uh, the layout of, of the course. <clears throat> the outline uh, is, goes in uh, uh, four units um, and unit one next, uh, is an introductory unit uh, which explores the porous boundaries of the course through a series of case studies in teaching and research, much as we have been talking about in this presentation. Uh, unit, the first part of Unit 2 will explore issues of translation, representation, and the intersection between ethics and law, and consent, the ethics of working with Indigenous people, and the object and knowledges belonging to them. And in the second part, 
the unit will make visible frameworks that have been developed for conducting ethical scholarship, including the care principles, which we heard about in the last presentation, and data feminism. The third unit will provide engagement through DH and digitally enhanced projects with a question of knowledge paradigms, the concept and practice of border thinking, and will challenge the way the ways in which we teach and research within a Western knowledge paradigm vested in our curricula, in our knowledge productions and knowledge management systems. And our last and fourth unit um, uh, will, uh, is a toolbox, the goal of which is to provide a resource for conducting ethically aware research, including community agreed best practice in such areas as working with children, and working with uh, sensitive materials and with the knowledges of indigenous people. And uh, the unit will also provide examples of consent forms beyond what is required legally, issues around open access publishing, particularly when working with sensitive materials and showing awareness in disclaimers and commentaries. <clears throat> so, um, Please take our survey and join the conversation. Uh, um, um, highlight what uh, the many, many gaps we know uh, is in, in the material for the course, comment and make suggestions. And thank you for listening.